Hi, everybody. Welcome to Busy Living So Far. Busy Living So Far. Busy Living So Far. Hi, everybody. It's episode 269. How is everybody on this Wednesday, October 27th? Halloween. It's Halloween week. I'm actually wearing little skeletons in my ears. If you watch this on YouTube, you can see my little skeletons. Um, today's podcast is about changing our mind, changing our mind. How many times have you changed your mind? I change my mind all the time. I change my mind all the time. I used to say when I was younger, you know what? I'm never going to do that. You know what else? I'm never going to do that either. And it's so crazy because I'm making sure the stuff runs up. It's so crazy because how many things have you done that you said you were never going to do? So I was never going to get that drunk that I couldn't remember where my car was. I was never going to drive drunk. I never was going to. Oh, hook up with certain people. I was never going to do certain things. And I did it. And I did it. And those I was when I was drinking. And I've never regretted. I've never wanted to change my mind. Like, you know what? I've decided I should start drinking again. It's a good idea. That's not a good idea. I've not changed my mind on that. But pretty much everything else, I've changed my mind. And I don't know why. And I can only talk to myself why I feel crazy when I've changed my mind. Like, especially because now I'm sober and you're supposed to be sober and you're supposed to know what you want and you're supposed to be on this certain trajectory. And um, what if you're not on that trajectory? What if you are have made a choice and you're doing something and you've committed to it? So I'm going to say I bought a house and I moved somewhere. And I was so excited to move to this place. And then I moved there and I was like, this isn't where I should be living. I don't want to live here anymore. It's really quiet. I'm 50. Most people who live here are way older than 50. You know, I left the place I was living because I thought it was too much. And now I'm like, I kind of miss that too much. And I've changed my mind. Am I crazy because I changed my mind? Well, I'm crazy because I'm just crazy. But is it crazy to go and say, you know what? I've changed my mind. This isn't going to work for me. Is that insane? Is that a bad thing to do? Let's say you committed to going to dinner with someone and you said, yes, I'm going to go. And you get really excited and you go out and you buy an outfit and you're like, this is going to be amazing. I'm going to have so much fun tonight. But the day that you were supposed to go out with that person, you're like, oh my gosh, this happened. This happened in life. You know, life happened and you're supposed to go to this thing and you had the right dress for it. And you were so excited to do it. And it gets to be like four o'clock and you're supposed to be there at six and you look at your partner, your friend, and you're like, I don't want to do this. I've changed my mind. I've changed my mind. I can't do it. I'm too tired. I'm too tired. I can't do it. It's a Friday night. I didn't know. It's raining out. I've just, or it's sunny out. And it's just, I'm beat. And I can't go. And I feel really badly, but I cannot muster the energy to go. Nine out of 10 times, we normally make ourselves go. And then we're either we have a really great time or we are like, oh my God, why did I just go to this? Because I knew I was too tired to go. And now I got into a fight with my friend. I feel kind of like shit. I, why did I go? Why didn't I go with my gut instinct and say, you know what? I shouldn't have gone. I should have stayed home and taken care of myself. You know, 
we live in a society that tells us so strangely that we're supposed to be busy all the time. I'm supposed to be busy. I'm supposed to be doing this all the time. I'm supposed to be doing that all the time. I'm supposed to have my kids in 10 different sports at one time. I'm supposed to have my kids at swimming and then I'm supposed to have another kid at tennis and it's only me and I'm a single parent and this is too much. And, but everybody says I'm supposed to do this and I've changed my mind. I don't want to, it's too much. I've gotten into it and it's too much. How am I going to back out of this? How do I change my mind? and feel okay about the fact that I changed my mind and what other think about me is none of my business. It truly is none of our business. There's going to be people that like you and people that don't like you. Not everybody's going to like you, especially me. I mean, I'm the loud mouth. You know, I've got a big mouth. I'm a lot. I've got a lot of energy. I've got more energy than most people. I beep, 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 bounce, bounce, bounce. People look at me and they're like, you're always busy doing stuff. Well, to me, it isn't even... I don't even feel like I'm that, I haven't even been that busy recently. When I was a single mom with three kids, I was insane. It, it was insanely busy. And I went from this thing to that thing, to this thing, to that thing. And I was so busy. And then when they all graduated from high school and everybody left, it's a real void. Especially if you've been a state mom, maybe if you're not even a state home mom. And now you, if you just have a nine to five job and you used to have to go nine to five job and, oh my gosh, how am I going to get dinner? And then I've got to run to this sporting event and I've got to drive them there and I have to drive them there. And, oh my God, I have to do all this stuff and it's too much and it's too much and it's too much. I remember being it like that. And then they leave. Those people that were in living in your house, those children that were like whatever, or they didn't leave, but they at least can drive their own cars and they don't need you anymore. And you're like, okay, part of me just left. That feels uncomfortable. It feels uncomfortable. You're like, I just, it's when you give up drinking. When you change your mind and say, you know what? I got to take care of me. I got to get sober here. I've been drinking too much. Um, I know I've been drinking too much. I know it's too much. I know I've been doing too many drugs. I've been doing too many things. I'm getting myself in too much trouble. This is too much. Everything I'm doing is too much. It's too much. I don't like it. It's too much. And I want to change my mind. I don't want to drink anymore. And you're like, this feels really weird. Because I normally, on a Friday night, get a cocktail with my friends. This isn't a cocktail. This is Pellegrino. Mm. And you used to go in the neighborhood and meet everybody. And you feel like, this feels uncomfortable. Because I used to go buzz to hang out with these people. And now I'm not buzzed. And it feels uncomfortable. I don't like it. I want to change my mind. I don't want to go to the bus stop anymore for school and hang out with these people who have already buzzed. I, I, I can't do this with these buzz people because I feel uncomfortable because not, and now I'm not in tune with everybody else. And I'm just in tune with me. And I've decided that that isn't working anymore. And I don't want to tell anybody because I'm scared they're going to judge me and they're not going to like me anymore. When did other people's ideas of us begin to trump the way we felt about ourselves? Is that confusing? So I'm going to jump, I'm going to down this down. So what, why is it more important that Sally down the street likes me? And I'm going to go bust my butt to go hang out with Sally because I told her I was going to hang out with her, even though I'm really tired. And I used to get buzzed with her all the time. It's not working anymore for me to get buzzed with Sally anymore, but I don't want to tell her because I know Sally's actually a gossip and a big mouth. So I don't want to tell Sally what's going on. So I feel really weird and I feel really out of it. And I know it's in my best interest, in my family's best interest that I stop drinking. But for some reason... It's Sally's thoughts of me and the fact that Sally's going to think that I'm this and that has trumped the fact that I know I need to get sober and I need to quit drinking. But you know what? Sally wants me to be there. Can I let Sally down? Can I let my sister down, down the street? Can I let her down and let her know? And I really love Sally. I mean, I really love to get drunk with her. She's been my friend for a long time. I'm doing air quotes if you're listening to some podcast. And she's been great. She's been awesome. I mean, she's fabulous. She, she gets the bottle that we like and we, or two or three or four, and we've been there for each other. 
We watch the kids. She understands what it's like to be divorced. She understands what jerk my ex-husband is or my ex-wife. She gets it or he gets it. And I have to let him down. I don't know if I can do that. I don't know. Because my relationship with Sally is important to me. But is it really? Like, think about that. So you're probably listening to me going, oh, is that there's no way that that my relationship with Sally is more important than my, my relationship with my partner and my kids. You can't tell me that that's more important, can you? Or it's more important with, just, let's just say I'm alone. I'm by myself. Is it more important that Sally likes me than that I like me? I don't think so. I don't know where in life that became okay. I don't know where in life it was like, okay, I've got to make sure my friends are happy so that I'm happy. And I think it's the other way around. I think we've got to find ourselves to be happy so that we can be with friends that then make us be happy. And the only reason I can talk about this is because that's how I ran my life for a very, very, very long time. It was what other people thought about me was more important than the way I felt about myself. And I really, if I'm going to delve really down deep and I'm going to tell you exactly what it is, I feel like for me, I, I think it was easier to make other people happy than to find myself because I didn't want to look at the mirror who I really was, right? Do any of us really want to look in the mirror and see who we really are and accept it for everything that it is? Like sitting here, I, if you're watching this, I darkened my eyebrows. Um, my kids don't like it, but I did it for me. Do I really care what anybody else thinks? Not really. I like it. I think it looks kind of cool. I look kind of different. It's weird. It's Halloween. Who gives a shit? But we put so much on what everybody else thinks and we don't put anything on what we think. How do we find that love within ourselves to fall in love with ourselves? And if we change our mind, being able to say, you know what? It's okay. I changed my mind. I don't want to do that. I'm going to change this up. You know, I only get to live on this life one time and I need to do this for me. It's really important for me that I do this. I, in fact, I have to change this because I instinctually, I know that where I am is not right. So if I can make, if I can put in the effort to change it, put the work in, will everything be okay then? It might not be. If we change our mind and we go do something else totally different, that still might not be it. And who tells us that it's the last time that we can move and the last time we can put the effort into these things? What's If you can afford it, you know, if you can financially afford it, or if you don't get in trouble doing it, then if you aren't hurting anybody, then why not do it? Because when do we put other people's thoughts about above our own? Others needs, we put our kids' needs in front of our own, especially when they're little. We have to put their needs in front of ours. They don't know how to walk. They don't know how to get their, they can't go get their food. They cannot change their diaper. They don't know how to feed themselves a bottle. They don't know how to go to the refrigerator. They don't know how to warm a bottle. They don't know how to do anything. We've got to put their needs before ours when they're young. We just do. Like we've got to go into situations that might not be comfortable. Like being sober, walking into a, you know, for the first time walking into parent teacher's night, which is coming up or you, I, I know everybody's getting to that time where you go back to school and it's like, oh my God, what am I going to wear? What am I going to show up in? Oh my gosh, I have to go to parent teacher's night and I have to go see all these people. And I don't really want to see these people because I don't feel comfortable about me because I gained 10 pounds during COVID or 20 pounds during COVID and I feel like shit about myself and you're telling me I gotta get dressed. God, wouldn't it be easier to get a cocktail to get through this or hurt myself to get through this? I'd rather do something than go and show up. You have to show up. I didn't show up in high school, I have to tell you. I have to be completely honest. I did not go to parent-teachers conferences when my kids were in high school. And did I go because I didn't want to see people? It really wasn't that. You know why I didn't go? Because the reality is, is that I really have no idea how to, my kid, by the time my kids were in high school, were in high school, I had one child that had learning disability. I'm kind of breaking up here. I don't know why that just happened. But anyway, um, 
I had one child that had an IEP and for anybody who knows what that is, he needed help. Okay. I have one child that needed help and he was definitely on this. I, I needed to keep a pulse on him. So the parent teacher conferences were kind of like moot because I had already, I already had a, an in with all the teachers because he needed help. So we were always coming up with plans to help him. And then my my daughter, she didn't need anything. And my younger one was just like my third one. And I was like, whatever. And I always found that, you know, I went, if I went to the parent teacher conferences, I didn't need to be social with people because I was always social anyway. And number two, I just, I, teachers to get, you know, I feel like teachers, especially in a lot of the public schools in America, they have to have their master's degree. You know, they know what they're doing. They're teachers, especially in public schools in America. A lot of them in the Northeast, especially when my kids went to school, a lot of them had their masters. They'd gone to school for whatever subject they were going to teach my children. And they knew what they were doing. So I said, you know what? They know what they're doing. They don't need me to go in here. That's my kid's job. That's their job to go to school. You go figure out what you need to do for school. And if I can help you out, let me know. But me going and listening to what they're, they're following the curriculum. They have to do that. I can never say that word. And um, I didn't, wasn't going to change anything there. I, 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 my kids are going to come home and tell me what they need to do. They've got their homework, finish your homework. You don't get good grades. It's on you. You know, I already went to college. I, you know, that was, I don't know. Some people today would probably be like, oh my God, I'm mortified that you did that. But that's just what worked for me. I don't want to be judged by you because I don't really give a shit if somebody likes it or doesn't like it. That's just what I did for me. I never went to parent teacher conferences, but I know where that anxiety comes from, where that anxiety comes in and where people are, you know, we anxiety for one is fear. So just sit call for what it is. I mean, people say, Oh, I have so much anxiety. I'm like, why don't you just call me and say, I'm scared. Let's just call it what it is. Like this big word anxiety. If you just call me and say, you know what? I, every, I walk into work and I feel scared. I feel scared. I don't like walking into work. It makes me feel yucky. I feel like I didn't do this right. And I didn't do that right. And I'm like, oh my gosh, I just went to school and I just, it feels bad. I have anxiety. And the reality is you're scared because you're scared you're, that someone's going to judge you. We judge ourselves. When we decide to change our mind, we're so worried that somebody's going to judge me that I'm doing the right job. I'm doing the wrong job. Somebody's going to judge me and say, oh my gosh, you know what? You didn't do that right. Or somebody's going to judge me and say, you did this wrong. For one, where is this table that told us what we're supposed to be doing? I always, always wondered that my entire life. Where is this round table where all these people are sitting and they're going to judge and tell me what I'm doing right and what I'm doing wrong. And if I don't, they're going to ding me. And if I don't do this, they're going to ding me over there. There is no such thing, by the way. There is no table. I mean, obviously there's God. So you have to know right from wrong. You're going to do, if you're doing like, if you're nice, you show up, you're a nice person, not too nice. Cause today, like people take advantage of you. You don't want to be too nice. You just go and you're just nice and pleasant. And then you leave. It's good. Why do we think we need to do all this other crap to get people like us? Like, when was this whole thing started that everybody had to like us? Because I know for me, there's only a certain number of people that I like that I want to hang out with. And there's a certain number of people that I have to, um, that I want to respect me. That's my kids, my husband, you know, and some friends. And when we change our mind, we're worried that, at least for me, I'm worried that somebody's not going to like me. I think somebody's going to judge me and be like, you changed your mind. You moved to that place. You took that job and you decided you didn't want that job after you went there for eight months and you realized, you know, this job isn't for me. I don't like this job. I don't want to sit here and do this anymore. I think that if you're committed to a job that you've been in for um, years, decades, I think that's different. But if you took a, just took a job a year ago and you're like, you know what, I took this job eight months ago. I really thought it was going to be this thing and that thing and this thing and that thing. And then you get there and you're like, you know what? It's none of those things I thought it was. And I don't really like it. And I want to change my mind. And I want to get a different job. But you're like, I'm so worried everybody's going to do this. And then I'm going to drink. Then you pick up a drink. Or you pick up a drink because you went to back to school night and someone snubbed you and you picked up a drink. 
you know, this whole program of being sober is so like getting okay with those feelings going, okay, that was not comfortable. I'm changing my mind and I'm going to do it. And I'm not going to drink over it because you know what? I changed my mind and I'm going to go do something different because it's important to me. And it's more important to me that I change this than I do drink. And I do worry about what other people think. I'm not going to worry about it. I'm going to, when I make this decision, I'm going to put what other people think about me over here on a shelf and I am going to be okay with that. Coming to that decision, taking the time to go, you know what, if I changed my mind and I took this job and I was really excited and I told my friends and they did all this stuff for me or I moved and excuse me, people had a goodbye party and did all this stuff. And then you're like, guess what? I'm eating crow and I'm coming back. Okay. That's what I'm doing. I'm eating crow and I'm going back. I'm going back to South Florida. It doesn't feel. It was great to live up North, but you know what? For me at the same deal, it was like, it was a little too small, a little too quiet. And I'm not there yet. I'm not ready. I didn't know it was so quiet here. And I don't think I would have known unless I moved here. Maybe if I had rented here rather than buying, but that's in, that's in hindsight in the rearview mirror. But I had to change. I have to change my mind. And I love recovery people, and there are not a lot of recovery people here. So I got to go find my people. You know, it takes time to find our people, especially when our kids have gone and we can make different choices. Like we can go places like we never could before. When our kids are little, you can't go anywhere, right? You're like, okay, they're in school. I mean, you can go to certain places, but you know, when they're in high school, you're like, I don't want to leave, make them leave. So, you know, you normally it's like, you've got this thing that you got to stay there for, but once the kids go or, you know, the jobs changed or whatever it is, and you're like, I can go wherever I want to go. And you go someplace and you get there and you change your mind. It's okay. to change your mind. It's okay. It's so good. It's okay to say, you know what? This isn't working for me. It's okay to say, you know what? I really wanted to come with you on a Friday night, but I'm tired and I've changed my mind. I can't make it. It's okay. You know, I used to have this, this thing. Did you remember this thing that they used to talk about, which was FOMO? Maybe COVID got rid of FOMO. Maybe since COVID, there is no more FOMO because nobody goes out anymore, but maybe FOMO is coming back. So fear of missing out. That's what FOMO stands for, fear of missing out. And um, I remember when I was first getting sober, I was like, I was so fearful that I was going to miss out on everything. I was going to miss out on the party. I was going to miss out on being fun. I thought this is my life is over. I'm going to be sober. It's going to be boring. My life's going to be. Uh... And it never was boring. It hasn't been boring the past 15 years. I've been lonely the past 15 years, but I've never been bored. I mean, I've been bored every once in a while, but I find that maybe my board, my boredom is lacking my, um, I'm not bored as much. I'm not, but I do get bored and I want to change things up. But that the fear, that fear I had, maybe somebody would call it anxiety today, but that fear I had that it was going to be boring and I wasn't going to have any fun anymore. Literally was trumped by the fact that I actually could look in the mirror. Like I can look in the mirror and I can see what I see and I like it back. Who would have thought that? Who would have thought I actually liked myself? I could authentically like myself and I could authentically own where I was going. And I could own when something didn't feel good, I could change my mind. Mm. Who would have ever thought that? Like I could change my mind. I could do different things and it was okay. Mm. When I was drinking, I never, um, I talked about doing a lot of stuff. 
I remember that. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. But you know, because um, I wake up the next day after drinking and feeling so bad about myself and what I had done the night before that I wake up and I'd be like, oh, I can't do that. Or I don't have the energy. I'm too tired. Oh my God. My body can't take it. I remember just laying on the couch being like, oh my God, the world, just take it away. I'm spinning. I can't do this anymore. I just want to die. <laughs> right. And then today you get sober and you have this life that then gets filled with life things, you know, like spouses, kids. I already had a spouse and I was already over with one spouse when I got sober and I had little kids. So that wasn't new, but I had these kids and I would wish time away. And this is sober too. And um, now here I am and I look back at my life and I'm like, how I wish when my kids were little, I were more into it. Now I can't go back and change it. It is how it is. And thank God my kids turned out okay. But, you know, that time we have on this planet is so finite. It's just such a small amount of time. And I feel like we take it for granted a lot of times. You know, I was at dinner with a couple of friends of ours down in Fort Lauderdale and their parents actually last week. And we sat down to dinner and my girlfriend across the table said, oh my gosh, I just got a text message, a friend of mine. Oh my gosh, this can't be true. Somebody said that da, 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 passed away. And the person was the same age as we are, like in his early fifties. And the guy never woke up. Did he have any, I don't think he had any feelings that he wasn't going to wake up. I don't think he had been sick. He hadn't been anything. He just went to sleep and didn't wake up the next day. And that can happen to any of us. But we sit here and we pretend like we've got to make these decisions and they have to last forever. And that every decision we make, is like life or death. And that every decision, if you decide to quit drinking, that is life or death. If you are drinking too much and you decide I'm changed my mind, I don't want to drink anymore. That's a good thing. That's a good thing. If you have been eating McDonald's forever and you're overweight and the doctor said you really need to lose weight and you're getting high blood pressure and you're getting diabetes and you've got precursors to those, stop doing that. And you're like, how can I stop it? It's too hard. Well, it's not that hard. If you change, try to change something for 90 days, you do something different for 90 days there's a good chance that you'll get over that thing. Okay. So if it's drinking and you're like, I'm not going to drink, try not drinking for 90 days, but just do it one day at a time, but just say 90 days, that's three months. And you're going to be like, I can't quit drinking. It's Halloween. I love to go get fucked up with my kids and walk and trick or treat with them. Okay. Now think about that. I just said, I like to get fucked up and walk my kids around. No, that's not a good idea. Time out, time out. Your kids want you present. Your kids want their real mom and dad showing up and being there and not being like, whoa. They want you to be present. And if you're the only sober mom that's with all those parents that are out there drinking and trick or treating, that's a huge gift. They get to be able to see you doing life and being like, wow, look at that. Look at that. She is totally not drinking and she's having a great time. And sometimes it's not about us. Sometimes God has us down here on this planet doing certain things to be just examples to other people. Sometimes it's not about us. You know, I've been, I did a, I was doing, I'm doing a Bible study and, you know, there's a lot of talk in the Bible about helping others. And how we're supposed to help other people in this world. And sometimes the little help can be holding the door open at the Wawa or at a gas station or at the grocery store. Or sometimes it's going through a toll booth or going through a drive through and paying for something for the person behind you just to pay it forward. Sometimes you want to change your mind and you want to get out of a funk. Maybe it's time to take care of somebody else. Maybe it's time to do something for somebody else and have them not even know that you did it. What if you saw that a dog went to the bathroom on somebody's yard and the person didn't pick it up, but you had a bag in your pocket and you could pick it up? What if you just did that and didn't tell anybody? Hmm. 
What if you actually picked up the phone and called somebody you haven't talked to in a really long time and just called and said, hi, how are you? I haven't talked to you in so long. How's everything? When you do those things, you don't worry about the fact that you've changed your mind and what other people think. You're like, I'm out of me. I'm not thinking about me. I'm thinking about somebody else. I'm pulling a fast one. And it makes you feel so good. It makes you feel so good. Life is, um, life isn't to be taken for granted, one. Life is, you know, we change our mind. We decide, you know, I looked at my, I, I look at it this way. I changed my mind 15 years ago and decided that I was going to get off the party train, at least the drunk party train. And I decided to change it. And I was like, you know what? I got to do this for the best of me. It was fun what I did before. It was really fun, but it just didn't really go. It did not work in my life. And so I decided to stop the party train never look back because that first part i call it pre-reality or party time party time don't really remember blackout girl um blackout girl till i was 37 and now i'm not blackout girl now i'm just regular girl and i, my, I you know i don't have any kids at home anymore that sucks so how do you reinvent yourself there it's constantly reinventing yourself and constantly changing our minds this life did not come with a manual no, I didn't. It came with, you know, it's having this thing inside of us that we're going to get quiet and we're going to change our mind and we're going to do something a little different. And what anybody else thinks, I can't worry about. No, I can't worry about. I just have to take care of me and my immediate people that need me. If you have elderly people in your life, if you have handicapped people in your life, they need your attention. But beyond that, it's like, I want to be there to help other people. I don't want to just be thinking about me because it's boring and thinking about what other people think, which is none of my business. What other people think about me? None of my business whatsoever. It doesn't matter. I have to go to bed. You know, I changed my mind about living here and I'm going to move back South Florida. Ever since I made that decision, I've been sleeping like a baby. It's crazy. It's crazy. Now, people might say, where are you going? What are you doing? Da, 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 da. It doesn't matter. All the particulars don't matter. It's not even worried about talking about. It doesn't matter where I'm going to live, what my address is. Doesn't, that doesn't matter. What matters is, is that we get comfortable in our own skin, whatever way you have to do it. And if you've been saying, you know what? I'm not comfortable with the fact that I've been drinking and I'm making people crazy around me. I don't like that feeling anymore. I want to change it up. If you feel like that and you feel alone and you've got nobody to talk to, please reach out to me. You can always reach out to me at busy, B-I-Z-Z-Y, at busylivingsober.com. Or you can reach me at elizabethchance.com. Elizabethchance.com. Elizabeth at elizabethchance.com. I forgot the Elizabeth part. Elizabeth at elizabethchance.com. And um, reach out. Don't be a stranger and uh, know that we're all trying to do this as fast as we can. And if you don't have anybody in your life you can talk to, you can always reach out to me and talk to me. I, I, I don't promise to be, you know, I promise that I try each and every day to be a better person. I try to be a better sober mom, a better, even though my kids are adults, a better, you know, I had to realize that, you know, I don't, I, I don't always know what's bad. My kids are adults now. You know, they need to try their own experiences. I might have tried things and said, oh my God, don't do that. But they might be like, mama, I want to try it anyway. I might not be, have been good for you, but it might be good. For, and they're exactly right. I don't know. I got to change my mind and change my whole way of thinking. They got to do what they got to do. Sometimes I just got to shut my big fat trap and talk to that one friend in my life that tell, I tell them to and say, this is what I think. And they say, okay, good, bad, and different. And if I need to get more help, I do that. Reaching out for help is hard. It's so hard. It's so hard to finally say, I need help. And I want your opinion. But when you do it, it feels so liberating. That's it for today. Until next week. Keep getting busy. Living. Sober. Reach out. Call someone.
be in touch with somebody. Don't eat too much candy on Halloween. Have fun though. Laugh. Be in the moments. Leave your cell phone at home. Be there. I know everybody wants their cell phone because you want to take pictures, but still, sometimes it's just better to just be present. Leave the cell phone at home. Have fun. Mwah. Thank you for following me. Thank you for being my friends. Thank you for reaching out and telling me how much my podcast means to you. Because a lot of times I don't hear all the time that people like it and I keep doing it. And we know I'm not doing it to get rich. I'm just doing it because I love you guys. And I want to share the fact that getting sober is not easy, but life on the other side of the rainbow is so much better. Take care, everybody. And until next week, keep getting busy living sober. Bye-bye.